Uh, further to the little blurb I did on the Ubermensch yesterday, I think that there's a little bit more to it, <laughs> more than a little bit more, but a little snippet I'd like to add uh, is that, yes, Nietzsche does actually deal with the herd and how the Ubermensch is somehow separated from the herd, um, but again, I hold that you wouldn't be able to tell from the outside whether or not somebody is an Ubermensch and has been separated from the herd. Um, <clears throat> it's been my experience that most people simply accept life the way that it is, um, accept the values that are imposed upon them, accept the constrictions uh, or the constricts of life here in this existence that most of us are born into. Um, well, that all of us are born into, but some, you know, most of us accept it all and just sort of say, okay, it, what I see here is not an illusion, it's all real, and I'll just accept it as such. And <clears throat> that's okay. Um, that's sort of the the herd, and I would sort of, I wouldn't even use that in a pejorative sense. I've often envied the herd. I just wish that I could get the same kick out of it all that everybody else did. Um, I think that that's one of the reasons why uh, Nietzsche often appeals to people who are coping with or struggling with depression. Um, his philosophy of the Ubermensch and the will to power, sort of, um, in ma for many people, myself included, showed a way out of that. The existential crisis has a value, it has a purpose, because it breaks the hold of the herd mentality on you. I, I began this whole series by saying that um, Nietzsche says, okay, now that you've sort of, on your own initiative or by your own sort of cogitations, have sort of become something of a nihilist and you don't want to be a nihilist, let's talk, because you have to get to that point before anything that I can tell you is going to make any sense. Nietzsche's not a nihilist, if you ask me. He's an answer to nihilism. He's, I suppose there's some ways that you could call him... He's a nihilist in certain ways, in that he says that we have to reject all the values that we've ever been taught, and we have to re reject a lot of our notions of reality and everything. Um, now, to a member of the herd, who is quite content with all of this, that does sound like nihilism. <clears throat> but to someone who's already sort of a nihilist and sort of has nowhere to go afterwards, after having reached a nihilistic position, he says, there, this is, um, you don't believe in anything, you've lost your faith in everything, you've lost your belief in, in any of all of this that's around you, all the constructs, all the uh, values and everything that you've been taught. Now we can actually go somewhere with this. Um, the person who actually grapples with that problem becomes um, the Ubermensch, or the Ubermensch in training. Uh, or the Ubermensch wannabe, I guess. Um, <clears throat> and thus, sort of, they've already broken with the herd. Um, reluctantly, in many cases, like in my case, I wanted to believe, I guess, what everybody else thought was important, but it just wasn't important to me. Um, regardless, you can't make yourself value something if you don't value it. Um, so that's where I think that there is um, a, a sense that Nietzsche is pretty elitist, especially with ideas like the Ubermensch. But I would say he's simply reacting to something that happens independent of anything that he happens to have to say. Some people simply get tired of all of this, and they just question it all and don't find any value in it. It's it's not that, that they've consciously sort of said everyone else is an idiot and, and everyone else is living in, in darkness or whatever, although I suppose there are plenty of people that do do that. But almost in spite of themselves, a lot of people end up in that position. And Nietzsche speaks to them. He spoke to me that way. I'll put it that way. <laughs> Thank you.